on a way to kind of look at this. Uh, you know, using the IT service management suite, primarily it's the asset management application is giving you that ability to do it. I quite honestly think pretty much some type of discovery, again, being your own or being DMCs, really comes into play there. Uh, whether you just do, do the procurement, the purchase request, the pricing right within Remedy, or whether we tie this into your existing financial purchasing system and just take fees for them, both of those are certainly doable within the uh, the Remedy system there. And then we'll do the tracking, the reporting, tying the, the whole life cycle of what goes on there. Again, big emphasis on the compliance module as it would relate especially to uh, software license management. And you know, obviously tracking all of your costs that are associated with that uh, with that asset over time. So let's go over and actually uh, start to, to to look in the tool, and this should look familiar to uh, everyone out there. It's just the uh, the console of a typical staff member who's logged in and who's created their views of the things that they are interested in seeing. And then depending on your rights in the organization and which modules you have involved, this is where you might go out and start doing things, in their case, asset management. So as you can see here, we have a console for actually managing day-to-day -day activities associated with an asset or a configuration item. We do have the purchasing and receiving console. And again, with the increased emphasis now on software license management, we actually have a software asset management uh, console. So I'll just very briefly hit on the uh, uh, hit on the purchasing because again I think th there's a vast majority of people do that in some other financial uh, system that you've got out there. But you know, in that when you set up that you are are trying to do it, you can indicate you know who are you doing it for, what's the justification for it, if the type of item being procured requires a uh, a change management for the install, if that's your policy. It can actually spawn the change request right from the uh, received purchase requisition once that goes in. You know, who is it for? Who are the approvers that you have automatically mapped for a purchase such as this? All of the detailed shipping information, it actually goes out, does the pricing, goes through the approval process, and ultimately then would go over and uh, be part of your purchasing. And of course, when you do purchasing, you would first check the inventory as, uh, as would be appropriate there. Then if you are using the full piece here, that's when you would then simply have somebody who's obviously in charge of receiving. You know, when the received order comes in, we know about it because we've got a purchase rec against it, and we would just indicate how many we received because it could be you got a, a short shipment, and that would create the, uh, the information, get that CI created within our CMDB, and then we, uh, we're kind of good to go from that, uh, from that point. So if we go into our asset management console first, which is where the bulk of your time would be spent, let's talk about what we're, what we're doing in here. As with any remedy, console, incident, problem, change, whatever, pretty much the same layout right in the middle is the view that I'm currently looking at, which, of course, I can filter to make it be the view that I'm interested in. These are obviously my configuration uh, items that I have here. Uh, as many of you know, when I went over the seminar a few weeks ago on new in 8.1, you can now configure what columns show and in what order these show. The things within the asset console I can do is I obviously could just create a new CI right, right from scratch if one came into us. I could go in and manage the inventory. So, for example, when that purchase requisition would have gotten created, the first thing you would want to do would be to go over and say, well, what do we have in inventory? And I can see I've got a number of items here. I could view the location, view what the status of those products. I could reserve that inventory right from here. So you know you do have true inventory management in the uh, in this particular remedy module. I can manage configurations in here. I can manage uh, bulk updates, right? So now I've got all my configuration items in there, and perhaps what I'm going to do is I'm doing some type of uh, data consolidation. So here are all my computer systems that belong to you know this company at this site. And if I wanted to, using my control key here, just highlight certain ones of those and update the location they, they are residing at very quickly, just makes a nice, easy way to do that. It's called bulk updates to either CIs or, quite honestly, if you were moving you know, people from one office to another office, you can use that, uh, that type of functionality there. I also have the ability to set up 
schedules in here. So if you think about it, you may have maintenance schedules or whatever. Here's where I just set up a sample here that, hey, one of our servers, we want to make sure that we reboot it every Sunday night at 1230 because of, you know, maybe some memory leakage issue that we've got here or you know, whatever it may be. You know, what's the CI type? Here's the actual CI. There's a server named Maybach down here that we set this to automatically occur on, and obviously notifications flow automatically. And you can have as many of these types as you as you need to have out here. As you can see, it's typically audit schedules, maintenance schedules, review schedules, and of course decommission schedules. When are we going to set up that we need to uh, that we need to do things of that uh, of that particular nature there. Uh, the other thing uh, that you would do here, of course, is where you would actually look at the details about a particular device. So let's click on Maybach here. It's a Dell server, and let's look at the type of information you're going to be able to track within uh, within the system here. Mm -hmm. So this is a Maybach, uh, is the server name and the CI name. It's asset tag. It's serial numbers. You would expect it's a server. It's part of this uh, division or company, if you're familiar with Remedies uh, uh, Multi-Tenancy. Uh, this particular one is deployed as opposed to the other logical statuses, on order, in repaired, uh, in inventory, on loan, disposed, you know, whatever the various things would be. Uh, to any one of your CIs, if you wanted to have some automatic impact and urgency assigned to it whenever uh, a ticket is opened up against it, this is where you could configure that. Uh, additional details, right? What are your product categorizations for this one? Who's the manufacturer? You could easily have, I've got the product name and you could even have the model version number if you wanted to. When was it installed? Where is it uh, currently uh, located here? Then there's a tab for just additional specifications that you might want to keep on here that's more of the uh, configuration ID or RAM, uh, you know, is it running a virtual machine or, or not info? Then over the life cycle of this particular configuration action, I would want to have a work log, an audit log of every time we did something to it, I would want to record here in my work info, you know, we added memory, we, you know, we patched it, uh, we had to call the vendor to come in. This becomes your history, your audit history of everything that uh, different individuals have done on behalf of this uh, particular uh, CI. We leverage the contracts module that's part of the uh, system, too. You can see here that this particular Dell server is attached to an existing uh, uh, support contract that's out there. I've got the ability right in the tool to do that linking to an existing contract. Or quite honestly, if it was a brand new machine with its own standalone contract, I could just create it right here uh, on, on the fly and go through there. Then for any given CI, who are the groups and the individuals that have different responsibilities for it? So you can see in this case that this uh, is, is being used for employee services, so our entire people organization uh, does things because it's running their employee services, and you'll see that in a minute. It's also here I can see that the support group is IT back office support. That's one of our defined groups within, within Remedy, so we created that relationship. And there's also a particular individual, in this case, Mary Mann, is considered the owner of it. So anything to do with financial information or movement information would have to be approved to by Mary. And again, you can view the details in one of those. You can go in and add additional groups and or people. And obviously, if this were an individual client machine, this is where you go in and say, hey, this new Dell laptop was ordered for George or Fred or Mary or whomever it may have been. This is also where, now that we're going to start linking our configuration items to other configuration items, as well as the other modules within Remedy, this is where all of that sh is a quick access point to that. I'm not actually creating it here. I'm just displaying it. So I can see that when uh, in my CMDB, I've associated this particular server as housing my employee benefits application. So I know that any time I open up a ticket and somebody's called in and they've got an issue with the employee benefits application, I know that this server is, is involved with that particular infrastructure, or it may at least be one of many uh, that may be out there for that. 
I also can very easily see anytime any incidents perhaps have been opened and this server were identified or any problem records or change records or any other type. So here I can see there are three different change requests out there where this server was under linked as a relationship that it's either impacted, called, supported by in there. So this is a great place to bring together all of the interoperability of all the modules into uh, uh, a viewing for a particular CI. And if for this CI you've done that really detailed discovery of what kind of patches and OS levels and how much memory is in it and all of that, that would actually show up under your relationship detail. I don't have it in this particular server, but I'll pull up another one in just a second just to show you what that looks like. You also have a pretty comprehensive financials tab, right? This is the whole purpose of this module is tracking the entire life cycle, including the cost of this. So, you know, it was a purchase. It was under this budget code. Uh, you know, maybe it was a server that we ordered for a particular project, and we want to uh, reflect that in here. Uh, if we want to track what we paid for it, if we even want to go in and do the four or five common depreciation methods, Remedy can actually do that for you. Some of the years, double declining, straight line, you know, the typical ones that you would do. But the more important thing is, as we spend money on this device, this is where we want to be able to keep track of, you know, how much are we spending, how much did we pay for, what was the sales tax? Is there a lease cost? What's the maintenance cost? Software cost? Warranty cost? Master contracts? A vendor coming in to do services on the box? We want to make sure that we capture all of that so that we can produce reports out there of what the overall cost to the company or the entity is for this particular asset and maybe maybe even this uh, this class of asset. So quite a bit of good detail there that you can get into. And then you may want to track, well, what's been my outage history with this? Maybe you want to know every time a CI has been unavailable, if it's so recorded uh, in, you know, incidents or change or whatever, then it can automatically feed to here and let us know that. Again, providing some very rich uh, detail as far as uh, what's going on in there. So lots of great information that you can get when you're in one of the uh, one of the configuration items, and the the one other one I said I would just pull up real quick for you, where you can show the uh, an example of that detail, is this is one where we actually did kind of that WMI scan, if you would. So here in, in for this particular item, you know, here's the BIOS level, here's the memory configuration, here's the OS, here are the patches that are installed on that box. Uh, you know, here's what kind of processor it has. So if you want to bring that level of detail in so that when somebody is in asset management or whatever viewing mechanism they've got, you know, they have, uh, they have that information there at their, uh, at their fingertips. 